In this video, we're going to be looking at the Internet of Things. What does that actually mean? Well, around the world, there are billions and billions of these things. They're called microcontrollers, and they far outnumber microcomputers by a factor of maybe a thousand to one. When we start putting these together, linking them together on the Internet, then we have what's called the Internet of Things. Okay, so let's get started. Here's the Arduino. It's developed by engineers and programmers, but it's made to be easy to use so that even designers can make use of it. It's made to connect up very, very simply to the USB cable of a uh, Windows, Macintosh, or Linux computer. And uh, it's now powered but it's not actually doing anything right now. The engineers, the designers, set this up so that if you wanted to add more functionality, you could by the, using what are called shields. And the shield, the pins, fit very nicely like this. And you have now the ability to connect up these very easy to connect connectors. If you wanted to add a, an Ethernet function, you can just take an Ethernet shield and plug that in. And so if I configure the microcontroller properly and attach an Ethernet cable to that, I can get this to actually communicate over the Internet. You could actually make it as a kind of a, an internal web server inside here so that you can communicate it, tell it things, and get it to tell the internet things. So I'm going to disconnect the shields here. We'll take a look at some of the devices that you can connect to a controller like the Arduino. These are special uh, snap together modules and there are different ones. This is an LED light output. This is a tilt switch or a tilt sensor input. This is a push button input. This is a pyroelectric infrared uh, sensor. This detects movement used in alarm systems. This is um, a light sensor an input, um, another LED, a potentiometer, and a little buzzer. And it, also you can attach different LCD devices to it. So <clears throat> let's move these over out of the way. I've got this connected to my workshop computer, which is a Windows machine running the Arduino uh, software, and we'll take a look at the screen next. So let's bring up uh, Arduino. And uh, what, what I'm going to do is, is just pull up a quick sketch. Now programs in Arduino are called sketches. Um, the software or the programming system that Arduino uses is related to a programming language called processing, which is also used a lot by artists and designers. It's a subset of programming, basically. The Arduino system comes with some examples, and I'm just going to bring uh, a program called Blink, which is probably one of the simplest programs. This will initiate an LED blinking from pin 13, which on the Arduino is this little LED right here is connected to pin 13 and sets it up for output. 
and then does a loop. It writes on to the LED. It delays 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. And then after that delay, it writes off to the LED, waits another one second, and then goes to the top and turns the LED on. So it will turn on and off every two seconds, or turn on for one second and turn off for one second. So when you want to actually upload the software by means of the USB, you go up to your tools, make sure that the board is correct. This is the Arduino Due Milanove using the Atmega 328 chip, this thing here. And that's selected. And then a serial port. On this computer, it's COM3, which is the USB, which is connected to the uh, Arduino. So then all you do is click Upload, and it will compile, and then it will start to upload the software very, very fast. And now the microcontroller takes over, and it's blinking the LED on and off. So that's the most simple thing you can do with an Arduino. There are other programs available. We can take a quick look at the examples. You can make it do a melody, play music, You can make it connect to a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI instrument. Different types of sensors, a knock sensor. This, I think, is a, uh, a tilt sensor. Almost any kind of sensor can be made to work with an Arduino. An Arduino supports several different kinds of input and output protocols, so almost everything can be eventually connected up. You just need to know how, the, uh, how to interface the two. There are all sorts of different libraries that you can get. Many of them are for free. Uh, for example, this is for taking weather data or room environment data and outputting it to the internet and we'll take a look at what the kinds of things that I've done in just a minute. Connect it to liquid crystal displays. Ethernet and so on. You can download the Arduino software system for free. It's available for uh, Macintosh, Windows, Linux. And the hardware and software is open source, which means that you can actually uh, download the schematics for the Arduino and you could actually make your own. And in fact, um, that's what I do. So I don't pay the $25 to buy one of these ready-made because I don't always need everything. I build my own. Here's an Arduino. This is in what's called a, a breadboard mode. And uh, this is a different kind of a controller. It's still by the same manufacturer, but you can see that it's much larger. This one has many more input and output pins available. And what I'll do is I'll breadboard this connect it up, and then I will uh, transfer this. Once I have the program running and I have everything working, then I'll actually do soldering. So let's now take a look at a system called Zively. It used to be called Cosm, and before that it was called Patch Bay. And this is a system where you can take building 
environment data like temperature, humidity, and other things, and you can upload it to the internet and actually look at it on the web. So this is where the Internet of Things becomes very interesting. I've logged into Zively and I have actually two feeds. The first one is sensors around the house and this is an example of one of my Arduino based sensors. This is a just connected to a standard uh, power adapter. It's feeding about six volts into this. Here's my Atmega chip and this is a little radio. It's a little telemetry unit. All I need is to connect this up with power and it takes readings from this temperature sensor and sends it using this antenna to a base station which is here in my studio and then the base station is connected to the internet so if we look at the house sensors here we can get a sense of the different what are called channels these are the different sensors that I have connected in my home to this base station I'm going to turn off the workbench so that we, we can see the the whole thing. There we are. So I've got a sensor in the garage and it's showing me the graph of the temperature over the past six hours. I can change that to one day, seven days, one month, three months. Let's take a look at three months. So started taking readings in May kind of cool in May and then we had a warm spell in July and it's now the 15th of July now. I have a unit on the roof of my house and it sends me information about the battery level this is important because it is not connected to any power source. It has uh, a solar sensor, solar panel. So it charges some um, batteries during the daytime and at night the batteries run the sensor. There's humidity and temperature on the roof is 48.5 degrees Celsius, pretty hot. And this is the pantry. Um, actually, it's this sensor. I've taken it out of the pantry to show you. And we can take a look at, and you can see that I've just moved it from the pantry. And in the studio, it's quite a bit warmer. Let's go to five minute raw data points. I'm going to hold my finger on the, on the temperature sensor and we should see this going up. It's updating automatically every minute. So we should see in a few seconds a new update. There we go. So it's now up to 26.9 degrees. This is just proof that it is actually working. And here's the location, the rough location of, uh, of these sensors. I'll go back and I've just moved some sensors from my studio to 
my NASCAD office. And this sensor has an air quality sensor. And this, this morning I actually moved it, so as it, when I turned it off and then turned it back on, took a little bit of time to uh, get back reoriented. So it gives me uh, an air quality reading of 691 over 1023. The barometer, once again, this is where I didn't have it working, but it is now at 102.48 kilopascals. Humidity of 33. Light level, I don't have a light sensor attached, so that's why it's 9. And the temperature is, in my office, 28.6 degrees Celsius at NASCAD. So that's an introduction to the Internet of Things.